A very good morning to all of you. Professor Dr. Lakshmi, Dean, uh, United World School of Law, Karnavati University, Mr. Asim Pandya, faculty members and dear student friends. Mr. Asim Pandya has started uh, his lecture on a right note. You have all uh, been told that he is a very eminent lawyer. He is. I have also known him as a very good mediator, a very good speaker and uh, an author of several law books. It's a pleasure to be here in the midst of young minds in this beautiful campus. This is my first visit to Karnavati University and uh, the school, United World School of Law. I'm really impressed by the dedicated work being put in by the founders of this university and the School of Law. Friends, Mr. Pandya has given you some very good tips on happiness and success. Let me just add two more illustrations. Mr. Pandya rightly pointed out that you should enjoy partying, but you keep it within limits and must discipline yourself in studying because you have come here to study law and to make a career. I'll just give you one illustration. Sachin Tendulkar, who doesn't know him, everybody knows him. When Sachin Tendulkar started his career as a cricketer, he had a colleague, a friend called uh, Vinod Kamli. I'm sorry to say I, I had to give these names because I just want to contrast. Both were equally good cricketers. Sometimes Vinod Kamli would more, score more runs than Sachin Tendulkar. But then Vinod Kamli earned, started earning a lot of money and he thought that, oh, let me party. Why, why am I earning so much? I should enjoy partying. And he went into that direction with the result that his career as a cricketer came to an end. Mr. Pandya also uh, told you that you love whatever you do. You do what you love. In case you can't do that, at least love whatever you do. And I'll give you another illustration. Justice Sanya Sotomayor, who is a judge of the Supreme Court of United States, she came from a very humble background. And she was asked when she became a judge of the US Supreme Court that, what do you feel on becoming a judge of the highest court in the country? Who inspired you to do so well that you have become a judge of the Supreme Court of U American Supreme Court? And she said that my mother inspired me. How did her mother inspire her? Her mother inspired her to excel, to do whatever she did, you must do in the best possible manner. And this is the, these are her words, these are the words of Justice Sotomayor, that her mother would tell her that whatever you do, you must do well. If you clean toilet in your house, if you should clean it so well that the, any person who sees the toilet will say, ah, what a clean toilet. So when you are doing well, when you have to do well, it doesn't mean that you must get the best assignment or that you must get the best speech in the moot court competition or in the United uh, Nations uh, World Competition. Whatever is you, whatever opportunity you get, you should do it in the best possible manner. As they say that the a big door swings on small hinges. So whatever role you have to play, please enjoy that role. Friends, today is your first do, uh, day as a law student. So that reminds me of my first day as a law student. And that was exactly 50 years back because I joined law, school, law college uh, the, in the faculty of law in MS University of Baroda in July, August. 1973. So I think I have completed 50 years as a law student and each day of this 50 years I have enjoyed being a law student. Once a law student, always a law student. 
I was a law student formally for three years in the MS University. Then I was a lawyer for 19 years. And in each of those 19 years, I was a law student. Then I became a judge. And I was a judge for 20 years. Each of those 20 years, I have enjoyed being a law student. After my retirement as a judge, I'm doing arbitration practice, consultation practice for the last about eight years. And each of these days, again, I have been enjoying as a law student. When somebody comes to me for taking my opinion in writing, we have to work as hard as writing a judgment. For giving this opinion also, I enjoy doing the research. While for drafting also, I enjoy. Uh, Tejas Shah working with me will tell you that when I'm writing an award in an arbitration matter, how I want to improve each sentence that I'm writing in the award because I enjoy writing it. So friends, you enjoy whatever you do when more so particularly when you are studying law. Friend, now you are all very fortunate, more much more fortunate than what we were because when we were studying law, we always were under the impression that we can't do anything else but become a lawyer after going to the court. Now you have wonderful opportunities. You can join, join a law firm. You can join judiciary. You can uh, uh, take up many other assignments. You can do, be a legal journalist. And uh, the opportunities that now young lawyers get after immediately after finishing their law studies are so great that uh, in our days we could not imagine. For instance, when I was Chief Justice of the Bombay High Court, we had recruited young lawyers for judgeship. They would, you know, uh, be appointed as civil judge junior division and judicial magistrate first class, which is the first step in the ladder of the judiciary. So, in uh, most of the states now, many of the successful candidates are young ladies. In Maharashtra also, there were 50% lady candidates who passed the examination and uh, were also selected for this post. In Goa, now the, that is 70%. 70% of the young judges being recruited are ladies. So when, the, uh, when they are appointed as judges, they have to undergo a very long training at the judicial academy. The training is for one year, out of which first four months they would come to the Judicial Academy where they would be given training in law and the allied subjects. Then they would four months, for four months, they would go back to the courts and take practical training. Again, they would come back to the academy for the remaining four months. So at least six months they remain in the academy. After working hard, so many young ladies were selected as judges. After a few weeks, some of them came to us along with the director of the Judicial Academy, along with the joint director of Judicial Academy and told us that they, they wanted to resign because young ladies who were married and had young kids, toddlers, you know, six months, 12 months, young child. So they said, we cannot leave our children for such a long period at home. Therefore, we want to resign. So we said, no, no, we will not allow you to do that. We have a solution because the Judicial Academies they were occupying double-seater rooms. So we said, we'll allow you to bring your mother or mother-in-law to the Judicial Academy. When you are taking training during daytime, uh, your mother or mother-in-law will look after the child. And in the evening, you can go back and be with your child. So that is now the care being taken of uh, young judges who are ready to join judiciary. So give it a thought when you uh, pass your law examination and uh, you have the uh, you try exploring what are the options available to you so friends uh, the interesting thing about law as a profession is that it is one of the most interesting challenging and dynamic professions in the world you will enjoy it during your studies as a law student and also after becoming a lawyer the great advantage of this profession is that once you join the profession, people don't discriminate you on the basis of your economic background or the social background. 
you are as much a lawyer as Mr. Asim Pandya as is a lawyer after 40 years of practice. You can call him Asim Bhai. You don't talk, call, have to call him sir every time. So you see, that is the great beauty of this profession. Now, friends, uh, uh, what will happen when you join here as law student and you will have your classes? But it is not necessary, it is not sufficient that you merely attend your classes and take down notes of what is being taught to you. There will be no spoon feeding to you. As uh, once you are a student in a law college, you have to work on your own also. The professors will guide you. Professors will suggest to you good books. But it is you who has to study the subject by taking proper interest in the subject. The time will pass very easily. But how you spend these five years will be is going to decide uh, your career. Now, what should you do as a lawyer to become a good lawyer? This question has occurred to many young minds. Once a high school student thought that he would become a lawyer. Then he said, but what should I do to become a good lawyer? So he sent a letter to Justice Felix Frankfurter, who was a judge of the Supreme Court of USA. And then he became a professor at Harvard Law School. He requested Justice Frankfurter to advise him what to do. And this is what, this is the advice which Justice Frankfurter gave him. No one can be a truly competent lawyer unless he is a cultured man or woman. If I were you, I would forget all about any technical preparation for the law. The best way to prepare for the law is to come to the study of the law as a well-read person. Thus alone can one acquire the capacity to use language on paper and in speech and with the habits of clear thinking which only a truly liberal education can give. No less important for a lawyer is the cultivation of the imaginative faculties by reading poetry, seeing great paintings in the original or in the easily available reproductions and listening to great music. Stock your mind with a deposit of much good reading and widen and deepen your feelings by experiencing vicariously as much as possible the wonderful mysteries of the universe and forget all about your future career. So don't uh, get stressed out by what is going to happen after five years or 10 years. Enjoy the present. Now friends, uh, since I spoke to you about uh, literature and music, let me also tell you about films. As a school student, I used to enjoy movies. As a college student, I used to enjoy movies. And when I became a lawyer, I joined a senior lawyer's office. I would have to brief him for, you know, for the next day's hearing. And he would ask me to narrate the facts. And you know what he would tell me? That you narrate the facts of this case as if you have watched a movie and you are narrating the story of that movie. That is the best way to prepare yourself for a case because a legal case is not just about law. It's also about the facts of the case. And you have to apply the law to the facts of the case. So you must master the facts of the case and you remember them like a story. So when you are arguing before a judge, don't always keep looking at the papers. You look at the look into the eyes of the judge and argue your case because law is as much about logic as about you emotions. Law is as much about emotions as it is about logic. Now, very interesting thing is that you study, you will study so many principles in law, you will read jurisprudence, you start applying it to your daily life and you will find it very interesting. I used to play tennis in my college days and I would go a little early and uh, like you know the, there are only two courts so eight players can play but we would be 10, 15, 16 players and I would say that I have come first so I will go and play first. Now, if I only said that, uh, nobody would be impressed, you know. So, in law, we used to study some legal maxims in Latin. So, I would say, qui prior est tempor, posior est law. And everybody would be impressed. I said, what does that mean? So, that means, 
one who is prior in time has a better claim in law so there are so many situations when you go for a movie uh, or you buy tickets you go to a, a shopping mall and you buy clothes whether you can return the clothes to them or not you will find those bills where some conditions are written some warranties are written even subsequently in your life you will find interesting things so uh, a couple go for shopping and the husband says that uh, husband tells the wife that you better finish your shopping in the next 30 minutes huh? i'll come and pick you up so he went the wife went for shopping inside the shopping mall the husband went out for some other work after half an hour he reached the shopping mall and was waiting but the wife didn't come out for the next 20 minutes so he got annoyed when the wife came back didn't i tell you uh, to come you said that you'll come back in 30 minutes and you have taken 50 minutes so she said yes i took only 30 minutes for shopping 20 minutes i had to stand in the queue for paying the bill so that was not a part of the shopping i spent 30 minutes in selecting my clothes so that is what i meant when i said that i'll spend 30 minutes for shopping but uh, 20 minutes was standing in the queue which was not a part of shopping so these are all you know interesting uh, examples that you will come across in your life so don't take life very seriously take life like while enjoying life you know you also enjoy your studies and study of law friend now when justice frankfurter said that you should study uh, read literature and enjoy music i would also suggest to you that besides studying your uh, textbooks in law you should also read newspapers regularly because uh, read newspapers not just means the front page and the last page sports page you must of course read them but you must also read the editorial page you must read the articles on the editorial page because they are they contain serious thoughts you must also read the editorials because they are of very high level if you read editorials in times of india in indian express indian express also has one page called open uh, page open education so they explain the current topics they explain the current topics of the day which otherwise you don't get to learn from the headlines but these are all interesting uh, current events which you must be aware of then in when you study law the most important thing is why is the law made law is not just about technical interpretations there are also historical reasons social reasons cultural reasons why a law is made these days you read about uniform civil code right you will read about the debates on uniform civil code when i was studying law that was my second year of law i had done three year law course so for four years of arts in political science and three years in law so when i was studying my second year in law uh, we had one of the subjects called mohammedan law so the standard textbooks on the subject was mullah's principles of mohammedan law which contained very accurate in a very accurate manner all the legal principles of mohammedan law but i somehow i did not find the law interesting i i did not find the book very interesting so i met my professor and i asked him that sir i don't find this subject interesting what should i read so he suggested another book that was authored by asaf ali faizi outlines of mohammedan law it was such a beautiful law it was such a beautiful book so well written so i after reading that book i thought mohammedan law is one of the most interesting branches of law so you know it makes a lot of difference which material you read for your law studies for understanding any subject if you understand the basic philosophy underlying the law you will be able to understand the law much much better so don't always go for those guides which make you ready in one week before the examination that of course you will pass the examination and you might also become a successful lawyer but if you want to have the satisfaction of studying law properly you must read good textbooks which explain the law the prin basic principles of law the underlying philosophy law in a very lucid manner and there are several such authors whom your professors uh, would recommend so please keep that in mind <clears throat> another important thing about law is 
that you just can't always be content with you know studying the theory part of law you must also start understanding that what is the after all when you are as a lawyer you will be arguing your legal cases so when you will be arguing your cases you will be arguing before judges you will be opposing lawyers they are all human beings and when you have interaction with human beings whether it is with your parents or with your siblings or your friends or with lawyers or judges you must keep in mind that they are human beings so human emotions not just emotions how to persuade the other side how to put across your argument these are also very important skills and they are known as soft skills so soft skills you must try to cultivate the soft skills it is very very important because thinking on your feet you know thinking on your feet helps you a lot sometimes when theory or principles of law may not help you we had a very interesting case when i was chief justice of the bombay high court the month was july 2011 and you know that is the time when admissions admission processes for medical and engineering colleges are going on so uh, for admission to medical colleges there is a reservation of 3% for physically challenged persons so a girl came and said that she had got good marks she got 76% marks in her higher secondary examination she was fifth in the list of physically challenged students and therefore she should have been she should be granted admission to the first year mbbs course but the admission authorities said that no she is not eligible because the rules provided for certain criteria that the physical disability should be between 40% and 80% she had more than 80% disability therefore she was not eligible now what were what was her disability when she was in 10th standard she was commuting by train you know in bombay people commute by train so about 60 70 lakh people commute by train so she was thrown out of the train by somebody pushing you know the uh, there are big crowds so she was pushed out and she fell out of the train so she had amputation of both the legs one leg below the knee and the second leg above the knee so th- she was walking with the prosthetics prosthetics are those artificial limbs which physically challenged people use so the medical board had certified that her disability was more than 85% therefore she was not eligible and her lawyer was arguing before us so our initial reaction was that how can we override overrule the medical board opinion they are the experts we are experts in law but they are experts in medical field so we have to go by their opinion the girl who was standing behind the lawyer the lawyer was arguing she got up from the chair and gave him whispered something into his ear and he said me lords but my client can commute by local train in mumbai now local train in mumbai means you know it is such a difficult job so that immediately reminded me of my days as a young lawyer when i was in my senior's office office year and he was quite happy with my work so one day he told me that mohit bhai you should go to bombay you have that talent you must go to bombay and my first reaction was that sir but in bombay i don't won't like to travel commute by that local train you know traveling commuting from borivali to fort every day so that was the immediately i remained reminded of that day i said as a 23 year young man who had just uh, finished his law and was in the first year of his legal practice i said i don't want to commute by local train and here is a girl with both the amputation of both the legs she is commuting by train every day so that means that she has the physical capacity to work as a doctor also so we asked the medical board that you examine her again and apply the test of functional ability and disability and not just bodily you know what they do is they will ask so the medical board came back with the same answer that no without prosthetics she cannot climb stairs without prosthetics she cannot sit cross leg without prosthetics she cannot crawl 
so i said even for ordinary human beings sitting cross leg or crawling would be difficult so you have not examined the her functional ability and disability so we directed the authorities to admit her to the medical college so she she was given admission to first mbbs course she passed first mbbs examination second mbbs examination with first class final mbbs also she passed with first first class and now she has even passed md examination you know with flying colors so friends this is what is what happens in life that you have to you have to you know find out what is it that your client what is the injustice done to her you have to study the facts of the case you have to study the law applicable the possible interpretations of law and then communicate them put them across to the court to the judge hearing the case to the lawyers or to for the other side very often it happens that two reasonable lawyers you know can work out a very good reasonable amicable settlement to the benefit of both the sides and there are many situations in life when law alone will not be able to help you or your client and it is this soft skills which will help you therefore while studying law please keep this in mind please uh, avail of all your opportunities and uh, use them to the put them to the maximum use you will get opportunities for internship so in the first year and second year you do work with some ngos with some law firms with some think tanks but from the third year you must decide which areas of like uh, law you like so depending on that you do internship with uh, senior law advocates like uh, mr asim pandya you can also do internship with judges sitting judges of the high court and other courts so these are all opportunities which are going to be available to you and you must make full use them of them <clears throat> friends you will also have your professors teachers they will teach you law but please respect them there is a tendency amongst the among some students to you know to say that oh they they to think that they know everything and what is it the professor is going to teach them from the law books i can read law books so why do i need to attend classes no the personal interaction that you have with the professors and teachers will help you much more than merely reading books of course you have to read books but exchange of ideas is what is going to make you, make you a richer person as far as your knowledge and practice of law is concerned but you can also learn more you, you can also learn from your colleagues from your classmates from your roommates so you must always try to see that you have positive interaction with your friends and colleagues there are people who will try to you know whisper negative thoughts into your mind please avoid them and please try to see that there are uh, better thoughts better persons so uh, keep away from negative thoughts and try to be with your friends enjoy life with them but within the limits of a disciplined life you also please enjoy your music your reading and you must also enjoy your food i'm sure the students who come from their homes from their families and then we have then they have to settle down in the hostels and have to go to the cafeteria and canteens the initial reaction is that they they miss their home but please make it a point to enjoy your food here the moment you start enjoying your food then you won't miss your home and that is also i think a very important part of your first year of law school so make most of your uh, law school years and uh, whenever in life subsequently you have any choices to make please go by your conscience and uh, be grateful to the university to the college and to the professors who have uh, given you lessons in life thank you so much uh, professor uh, dr lakshmi for giving me this opportunity thank you